what everyone is asking is how do we monetize this? How do we get the maximum possible value from our content, both for broadcasters and producers? Um, what we've seen happen in the UK television sector over the last 10 years is that in 2002, the five big channels made up 75% of the viewing. Now, you need 30 channels to make up 75% of the viewing. So there's been a massive change with the fragmentation of viewing. So the audience is still there, but they're not all gonna watch it at the same time. In the UK, the talent cost can be really prohibitive. The commissions aren't getting the audience that broadcasters need to make money. And progressively, what's happening is that the level of originated drama commissions are dropping, leaving many UK producers, talent writers, with less work. Also, another key factor within the viewing is the amount of recorded viewing that takes place. Particularly for a commercial broadcaster, the showing of the X Factor on the 22nd of um, November 2009 had 1.4 million recording viewing. But you can see what happens during the breaks. It drops to as little as 200,000. So you're not getting the commercial impacts for those viewers. During our conversations with broadcasters, one of the key areas that they were concerned about, their programs being released earlier on other channels, was they were concerned it's going to affect their viewing, it's going to affect their brand. So what we found actually was if it was the opposite. Repeating it on more channels increased the brand awareness and brought more viewers, not only to the first showings, but the repeats as well. The producers we spoke to, they were saying that it's not a zero-sum game. The broadcasters don't have to lose for the producers to win. If we get this right, everyone can be winners. The internet is exerting pressure on the existing uh, windowing framework, and yet the, that is where all the value lies. And, and once you start opening up, uh, you know, actual internet distribution doesn't, doesn't in itself at this particular point in time offer uh, the kind of revenue potential that you can see in the, in the existing framework. Well, I think the revenue potential is there. There is the sense that these giant telecommunications corporations are putting vast amounts of money into gaining control uh, of, of, of television to combine it with their other platforms, telephones, internet, so on and so forth. So they must have some sense that there is tremendous value there. They have some sense in a business model that I don't fully understand. As I say, they believe that convergence is here and now. I'm quite sure that they're serious about exploiting it, but I think to exploit it properly, not only from the point of view of fairness, although there's you know, nothing wrong with being fair about things, but I think from the point of view of unleashing creativity and having producers incentivized that it, it, it makes sense to you know, sort of share in the benefits and, and have producers incentivized. Is it not better as a producer to, to you know, stick all your eggs into that basket and, and, and side with the broadcaster and, and trust them to actually be the ones to go out and help your, um, your, your programs gain some traction in the online world rather than just trying to do it yourself? Well, I mean, I think we should work together, um, you know, very definitely so, but even in terms of what you're describing at the moment, at least in the Canadian context, nothing comes back to the producer. They're retaining all rights to the exclusion of producers. If they want to do it themselves, they may have the clout and the muscle and even a great ability to do things in ways that we may not be able to do, but, um, but the content is being generated by producers and it seems to me a more healthy situation if producers share in, in, in the benefits. I think, the, um, I think the, the one comment I wanted to make about that issue specifically, Jonathan, was that um, you know, there are circumstances when that power and that muscle can be used to, to absolutely great effect. I think one of the issues that um, producers face is that it's a very blunt instrument. It doesn't take account of individual productions, individual audiences, individual niches. And one of the great things about the internet is it's made up of absolutely millions and millions of niches. So whereas a broadcaster would quite happily do a deal for 5,000 hours of programming to appear on YouTube and get a very, very good, um, comparatively 
at return compared to an individual producer doing that. Um, it doesn't take account of the needs of the specific audience for the specific programme, um, issues about things like uh, additional content, information about the show, you know, backstory, um, additional research, all the things that actually an audience on a very niche level who would be very interested in that just, just don't have the opportunity and therefore don't engage as much. Uh, I think the other thing that's very interesting is about <clears throat> actually, you know, uh, they find that because there is so much content out there, um, having just a, a primary transmission doesn't reach the audience. And actually at the moment, however big, however powerful YouTube is, actually it doesn't reach the entire audience. And I think one of the interesting things and one of the opportunities is having content on different platforms for different audiences and using that as part of your overall strategy in the same way as you do for broadcast. And this whole idea of, of uh, the, the freemium idea of offering content, uh, a taster of things, and, and then encouraging using that to, to bring people into the pay TV window. What, what's your perspective on, on that? I mean, I suppose in the, in the linear space, we in some ways balance free and pay. So we have two channels in free to air, which are Dave and Yesterday. And we've been able to take advantage of the audience growth of Freeview. Um, and we have eight channels that are in, in pay and um, you know, we're, you know, we're very committed to kind of building those and, and strengthening those. Um, I think, you know, we don't offer, we don't put sort of, con we don't kind of dilute that by putting long form content online. Um, we are sort of exploring how that might happen. Um, with with the, but we, you know we're partnering up with the platforms. I, I think just putting content out there willy nilly as an individual channel or individual producer, I think is is not going to get noticed. Uh, you know, and looking at you take a product like Sky Plus, an amazing product, and if you look at the marketing that uh, that the Sky have put into getting that to where it is, and now it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mainstream product. They've spent millions and millions and millions of pounds with an amazing product that has finally reached a kind of a, a position of high penetration. And it just shows you how compelling, you know, an offer needs to be for people to actually buy hardware. And I think that's the real challenge for the likes of, of Apple TV, etc. is you've got to match that. Um, and so I think from a, from an individual broadcaster perspective, you know we're, we will team up with <laughs> the big guys, you know the platforms, etc., in terms of how to explore these these kind of models, um, rather than kind of going off on our own and doing our own thing.